Hey, hey, ho, ho, brain teaser walk is the way to go. Hello and welcome. It is Trainer Mary Beth, live from San Francisco. Happy weekend to my live crew, Kelly, Aaron, and Sophia so far, and hi to my replay and recasters as well. Go ahead and start it off for 25 minutes of no pressure cardio. In the next 25 minutes, you will be treated, I hope treated, to an all MB potpourri of questions. So that means these questions are all from me. Uh oh, look out. And um, <laughs> they're about a little bit of everything. So remember, your trivia questions are always welcome to help us pad this thing out because it takes several questions every single week to make a good brain teaser walk happen. So if you have any questions for us, please submit yours to trivia.thenextfitnessthing.com. Michelle has entered the chat, entered the class. Awesome. Okay. Michelle with a Friday meme in effect. Aaron says, hey, Friday. We love a good fry around here. Okay, so the questions, most of these are going to be multiple choice. Oh, and B for Bill is with Michelle as well. Hi, B for Bill. <laughs> most of the questions will be multiple choice. So that is A, B, as in B for Bill, or C. And uh, there may be some true or falses floating around here as well. So T or F is all you need to pop in the chat in that case. Okay, are we ready, big brains? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, so first question. Um, June happens to be California Avocado Month. I have avocado toast for breakfast practically every single day, so I do love to be some good avocados. First few questions have to do with avocados, okay? Right out of the gate, we have a true or false question. So T's and F's on this one, please. Oh, thank you for the flowers, Michelle. So pretty. Always love the flower show in the chat. Um, true or false, the majority of California's avocados are grown around Los Angeles. True or false, the majority of California's avocados are grown around Los Angeles. B for Bill says B. That is not an option on a true or false question. <laughs> Come on now, B for Bill. Um, LOL, Michelle says. <laughs> All right, you got a 50-50 shot on this one. So let's see what you got. Sophia says true. Sophia, nice to see you back in class, by the way. Always great to have you. Aaron, always a pleasure to have you as well. Uh, Aaron also says true. And so Kelly, Michelle, if you might have taken this class earlier, you're staying shush. Um, Michelle says, okay, he changed his answer to F for false. Okay. And did I just see RD Sharon B just popped in? Yes. Hello. Welcome, Sharon. I'm going to repeat the question since you just arrived. And Michelle, you did take the class earlier, but you say false also because you did not have this question when you took this class with Alexis earlier today. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Sharon, the question, first question in this class, June is California Avocado Month. It's a true or false question. The majority of California's avocados are grown around Los Angeles. Sharon says, happy Friday. And Sharon says, mm, avocado emoji. I know. Tastiest emoji, one of them. <laughs> Sharon says Ventura. Ooh, you see, you say false. Okay. And does that everybody who's got an answer? I think so. Michelle says I don't do avocados. Texture thing. I get that. So you're going with your man. Okay. Sharon says, our neonatologist owns an avocado farm in Oxnard. Oh, I would love me an avocado farm. I, Alas, I don't have one. So I will go to the store. The correct answer, you may be wondering, it is false. Well, well, well. So um, Michelle and B for Bill got it right. And Sharon got it right, too. So keep track of how many you get. I want to know at the end. Um California is actually home to 90% of the entire nation's crop of avocados, by the way, uh, making it the largest grower of domestic avocados. And San Diego County, actually, is where 60% of all California avocados come from. That is the acknowledged avocado capital of America. Um, avocados, rather, avocados, what? Avocados are in season there year round, so fans can get their guacamole fix anytime they like. Sharon says, ah, indeed. There's some places here in the Bay Area that grow some avocados, too. Maybe not as many. Obviously not as many, according to the stats from that last answer. Okay. Aguacate, Sharon says. 
<laughs> Thanks for the pronunciation, the phonetic spelling on that one, Sharon. That was good. Okay. Um, next question from me. First, though, I get to welcome uh, Pam to the party. Hi, Pam. Team Mango reunites. Sharon and Pam back at it. All right. We're, as, we're in avocado mode right now, though, Pam. So we just had an avocado question answered. Let's get to the next avocado question. Uh, mentioned and it's part of the last answer that avocados are in season in, in Southern California, basically San Diego County specifically. They're in season year round. But multiple choice. When is the most affordable time of year to buy avocados? Most affordable time of year to buy avocados. Is it A, early spring to midsummer? Is it B, late summer to early fall? Or is it C, early fall to midwinter? I will repeat A, early spring to midsummer, B, late summer to early fall, or C, early fall to midwinter. Most affordable time to snag your avos. The pooch party is in effect at Michelle's. Hi, Toby. Hi, Danny. <laughs> Sharon says, oh, boy, but you're going with C. Pam says B. Do, do, do. I won't let the cost stop me because I have to have my avocados every day. Why can't I say avocado today? It's like the third time I've messed that up. I don't know. Um, Sharon says, never, but I'll guess B. <laughs> Uh, Michelle, you missed the question. Sorry, talking to walkers. I will repeat the question one more time. When is the most affordable time of year to buy avocados? A, early spring to midsummer. B, late summer to early fall. Or C, early fall to midwinter. All right. B for Bill says J for June. Sharon, you've been buying the mini bags of avocados and love them. Uh, Pam says, hi, Aaron. Hi, MH. That would be Michelle. Michelle says A. Aaron says, hi, Pam. Koa continues the pooch parade. Very nice shot, Sharon. Thank you. And let's get this one answered. I think everybody's in. Who has an answer? I hope. Aaron says, Koa. We have a Koa sighting. Yes. The correct answer is C. Way to go, RD Sharon B. Got it done. Uh, early fall to midwinter. The most productive avocado season is the so-called normal season. That well, sounds kind of judgy, but um, stretching from early fall through February. That is the six full months, by the way, that lead up to the Super Bowl. That's how we get those big honking sales leading up to the big game. So you have plenty of guac to rock at your watch party because they're more affordable that way. <gasps> wow. Okay. Isn't that fun? Erin says, I just saw your cuties too, Michelle. Poochie pie is all over the place. Okay, I do have some more questions for you in the all MB potpourri that is this class. However, do want to remind you all, we're very excited. We are just hours away from the first of our two Kilometers for Katie 5K events. I'm going to be leading the first one Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time. That is June 8th for those of you who were listening after the fact. But it'll be available on replay, as will Kathy's from Sunday, June 9th. Also, 8 a.m. Pacific time, for those who are with us live, we have a whole slew of new people who are joining us just for this event from Project Soulflower, which is the beneficiary of this event. We're raising money to help grant bucket list dreams and experiences to young adults dealing with terminal illness. So 18 to 26, the ones that are a little too chronologically enhanced to fit into some of the other organizations that top out at 18. So it is not too late for you to join us. We very much look forward to your company. I know that our existing teammates are going to be so warm and welcoming and loving to all of our new peeps. And hopefully they'll hang around with us for a while as this is thought about this. So that wouldn't that be nice to add some more peeps to the party? I think so. So you can sign up at K4K, letter K, number four, letter K, dot the next fitness thing dot com. Yay. Okay. Pam says regarding the most affordable avocados, I was thinking closer to Cinco de Mayo for affordable avocados. Aha. All right, Erin, you're in for kilometers for Katie. You just got your t-shirt today. I cannot wait to see your photos in it. It's a cute shirt, right? Love that. Love that swag. Okay. Back to the trivia. Uh, let's see where are we headed. One more avocado question for you. I promise there will be more besides avocados in this class. But multiple choice team, which of the following is not 
a difference between California avocados and Florida avocados, because Florida has them too. Not a difference between California and Florida avocados. Is it A, Florida avocados are larger than California's? Is it B, Florida avocados have more nutrients than California's? Or is it C, Florida avocados have less fat than California's? So A, Florida's are larger. B, Florida's have more nutrients. C, Florida's have less fat. Oh, I love this question. This is fascinating. Okay, um, Sharon says, Aaron should be our official merch model. You know, that should be a title around here. Hi, I'm Aaron, TNFT merch model. <laughs> Michelle says those uh, hour-long 5Ks are brutal in our heat. That's why we offer the replay option for you, Michelle. It is a little bit earlier this time, though. So there's that. Um, <laughs> as far as the answers to the questions go, Sharon says A. Sophia agrees with A. B, B for Bill says B for himself. Aaron, you already took this question today. Thank you for your honesty. Okay, so... Anybody else did I miss? Pam is in with an A. It's interesting, the Floridians. We'll see where this goes. <laughs> all right. I think, I think we're all in. Michelle, you had this question before. Okay. So the correct answer goes to B for Bill. Paid off saying B for yourself. Florida avocados have more nutrients than California's. That is the one that is not true. Okay. So. As far as the size, Florida avocados are indeed larger and smoother skinned than California's popular Haas variety of avocados. The biggest nutritional difference, California avocados have more fat. Florida's avocados have less. So that one's true. That was the C. The B, though, Florida avocados have more nutrients. So here's the breakdown. The Florida ones contain the B vitamin folate, especially in the California avocados. So like the more nutrients, yes. Yeah, so Florida avocados have more, but vitamin K and fiber, both avocados also contain lutein, which is the carotene, quote unquote, cousin of beta carotene that may promote eye health. That was a lot. I know that took us to the halfway point of class, by the way. So um, if you're outside, go ahead and turn around <laughs> if you need to. And uh, Aaron says, the Florida avocados are gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> and Michelle says, my dogs don't want to turn around. Whoop. <laughs> so, yeah, for each golf ball size portion of a California avocado, it's 4.6 grams of fat. The same portion of a Florida avocado averages three grams. Sharon, I know you're wondering about that because they're larger. Not really sure of where that happens, but that is that is indeed the case. Okay, um, the next question. We're done with avocados. We're moving on. I'm going to save some for my breakfast tomorrow because I need to nutritionize myself before I do kilometers for Katie. Um, we will move on to a true or false question. So T or F, please. Since it's June, it's kind of topical. Uh, true or false, no other month on the calendar begins on the same day of the week as June. So in all the other months of the year, there's no other month on the calendar that begins on the same day of the week as June within a calendar year, of course, we're talking. So true or false, T or F. I'm going to take a little beverage break. You get your answers in, please. All right, I'm back. I was munching on some almonds right before class and I had a little almond situation going on in my throat. Okay, I'm back. Okay, um, let's see. Aaron says, it sounds weird and just weird enough to be true. Michelle says, what about on a leap year like 2024? Mm -hmm. Pam says, true. Sharon says, nutritionize. Yes, I just coined a new word maybe. Um, you can use that, Sharon. You're saying true. Kelly also says true. So everybody's put in a guess says true. What's B for Bill got to say? Going against the crew, you will both say false. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, the answer is true. 
<laughs> I don't really have any context beyond that, but uh, not along with that, along with no other month on the calendar beginning on the same day of the week as June, also the day of the week that June ends on is the same day of the week as March every year. So we do have a match set for the last uh, for the last day of the month. So March and June, it's always the same. I had no idea. And it's after leap year, Michelle. So that would not apply in that part, in that case. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got. Sharon says, I'd like to motion to add it to our TNFT jargon, nutrition ice. Ooh, did I just invent a new word for the vocab? I'm just fun and I'm just fun. And Kelly says, I'm a June baby. J Kelly, what's your birthday? Yay, we get to party with Kelly. All right, Michelle, more gorgeous flowers. Thank you so much. I love all the color, all the beauté that you add to the party. Okay, um, doo -doo -doo, Kelly, or sorry, it's Sharon, rather, plumeria. Yes, I have earrings that I bought when I went to Hawaii that are um, silver plumerias, and they're my favorite earrings. They weren't cheap, but they were just, they were a vacation splurge and I don't want to lose one. I would be heartbroken if I did. Okay. Um, Michelle says, oh, thanks for letting me know that, Sharon. I know I stink at the, at the plant ID. So thanks to those of you who picked me up on that. All right. Next question. Well, it's not avocado, but it is food. Today, Friday, June 7th, as we're, as we're together live, happens to be National Chocolate Ice Cream Day. <gasps> oh, boy. Happy National Chocolate Ice Cream Day to all who observe. It's every June 7th, in fact. So mark your calendar for next year if you missed it this year. Here's the question, though. According to historical evidence, which ice cream flavor has existed the longest? According to historical evidence, which of the following ice cream flavors has existed the longest? Is it A, chocolate? Is it B, vanilla? Or is it C, strawberry? That's your Neapolitan right there, those three together. But A, chocolate, B, vanilla, C, strawberry. Which of those, according to history and evidence thereof, has been around the longest? Kelly's birthday, June 26th. We get to have a Kelly party. Yay. Michelle says the plumerias just started blooming at the neighbor's house. Nice view. Sharon says, oh, it's also donut day. Well, well. Pop your donut with some ice cream. Sharon, you're probably cringing there <laughs> as an RD. <laughs> All right. As far as the answers go, Aaron says B. B for Bill says B for himself. Why am I not surprised? Sharon says A. Pam says B. Michelle says A because I'm all about the occasional chocolate indulgence. June 26, Aaron says, is ah, son Landon's birthday, too, and he's turning 21 this year. Yikes. As a mom, the 21 Maybe interesting. Okay. Uh, well, happy birthday in advance to Landon and to Kelly as well, of course. We'll celebrate for reals when it happens. The correct answer, Michelle says happy early June birthdays. Indeed, there's Kelly's beautiful selfie face with the beautiful blue sky in the background. The correct answer is A, chocolate. How about that? I know some of you might have been thinking it was the vanilla. Well, here's the backstory. The earliest frozen chocolate recipe was published in The Modern Steward by Antoni Latini. Not sure if he's Italian or not, but it was back in 1693. Uh, cocoa was readily available in the form of coffee and tea at that time, so it makes sense that people would freeze those beverages and eventually create a frozen chocolate treat. Vanilla, on the other hand, was not widely available until it appeared in a recipe in the 1760s, so a lot later. Unlike cocoa, vanilla was rarely found in common households. It was only, in fact, available to royalty. What? Uh, there are some publications, by the way, that state that vanilla ice cream was served in royal courts, but there's little evidence to back that up in the form of handwritten recipes, so... Mm, all right, there you go. Chocolate for the win. Kelly, wrapping your Michigan State hoodie. I will not take offense as a Penn State fan because we're all in the Big Ten together. Okay. <laughs> Michelle, by the way, says it's our 34th anniversary in just over just over two weeks. Oh, my gosh. Big, big June coming up around here. Oh. Bill says go green, Kelly. There you go. 
I got to I got to drop a we are Penn State in here because I'm, I'm getting itchy. OK, um, <laughs> next question. We're moving on from the food now uh, to the movies. OK, if this is multiple choice, by the way, um, look at all the nice birthday greetings, anniversary wishes. Sharon says, knowledge nobody wanted or needed. I felt vanilla was too fancy and used to be cultivated from beaver glands, if I remember correctly. Oh, a specific part of the beaver's glands. Um, the butt. <laughs> Yee, okay. Um, Michelle says, I'll be your wingman, MV. <laughs> we are, Michelle says, Penn State. Michelle, you have to say thank you. And then I say you're welcome is how that Penn State tradition goes. Okay, Mich uh, Aaron says, now I'm terrified of vanilla. <laughs> Michelle says, thank you. I say you're welcome. That's how it goes. We got the protocol at Penn State. Okay, next, where are we? Oh, the movie question, multiple choice. If you watch the end credit, credits, credits, credits of a TV show or movie, either one, you may see credit for a Foley artist. What does a Foley artist do on a TV or movie? A, they manage the lighting. B, they create sound effects. Or C, they paint backgrounds. A Foley artist. A, they manage the lighting. B, they create the sound effects. Or C, they paint backgrounds. Um, Bill said the answer before you gave the options. Well, uh, let's see what he has to say. Sophia says C. Sharon says C, Kelly says B, Aaron going for B. I'm oh, sorry, wait, wait, C is from Sophia, Sharon, and Kelly. Did I get that right? Aaron says B. Michelle, one guess. B for himself, Michelle. <laughs> Pam says B for Bill, too. Um, well, the answer. Do, 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 do. Sharon says, anyone else thinking about Foley catheters now? Pam, who is a nurse. <laughs> totally different Foley. A uh, B, B for Bill. There you go. They create sound effects. In filmmaking, Foley is the name for the reproduction of everyday sound effects that is added to films, videos, and other media in post-production to enhance the audio quality. Foley is named after a real-life sound effects artist. His name was Jack Foley. He created sounds for movies from the silent era up until his death in 1967. And Foley sounds can be anything from the swishing of clothing and the click of footsteps to squeaky doors and breaking glass. That is all inserted. And a Foley can be used to cover up unwanted sounds as well, captured on the set of a movie during filming, like a plane flying overhead or passing traffic. It's fascinating. Check it out. Me being a radio person, I am into the sound effects and the whole phenomenon of Foley artists. My husband actually toyed briefly with the idea of becoming a Foley artist. He took a course and he's like, nah, it didn't go there. But it was fun. It was fascinating. Um, okay, here we go. More photos. Michelle's got some beautiful Tampa sunset representing once again. <laughs> and um, Pam regarding the Foley catheter says, ew, I'm cooking. Great invention, however. I, I'll, I'll, okay, we'll let that one slide. <laughs> More flowers, Michelle. Thank you. We got the pink in here now. And I think think we're just going to have time for one more question here. So it is again kind of showbiz oriented and it is multiple choice. Team, which of the following actor comedians is the only one to have been nominated for an Oscar? Which of the following, the only actor comedian to have been, well, the only one of these three to have been nominated for an Oscar? Is it A, John Goodman? Is it B, Jim Carrey? Or is it C, Billy Crystal? Might have thought that hasn't every one of those won? <laughs> Not necessarily the case. Okay. Michelle says, always such a quick and fun class. I know I can't believe it's almost over. Here come the answers. Sophia says C. Pam says B. B for Bill says C. Sharon says C. Aaron says C. So Billy Crystal, the predominant answer here, though Pam's going for Jim Carrey. Are you ready for the answer? Three. Two, one, I have never done this before. That was a trick question. None of them has ever won an Oscar. <gasps> Do you believe that? So as we're about to the end of class, I'm going to give you the backstory. John Goodman has, as far as Emmys goes, he has 11 nominations. He won one of those for Roseanne. 
Billy Crystal has hosted the Academy Awards ceremony nine times, never won his own Oscar. Jim Carrey at last year's Oscar ceremony hilariously spoofed his Oscar drought by saying, I'm here to present the Academy Award for Outstanding Achievement in Film Editing. That's all I'm here to do. <laughs> do you believe that? None of them. I was blown away when I found that out, but I'm also blown away that we're at the end of class. Dang, but you get to come back and join me soon, right? So thank you, everybody. And none of them were nominated. Yeah, Mich uh, Sharon, just, just to verify that. Yes, not nominated. Wow, okay, so thank you, everybody. Sharon, Aaron, Michelle, Pam, Kelly, Sophia, Replay Crew, Recast Crew. We learned a lot, didn't we, in that one? All right, so let's open up the microphones for the live crew because we got to high-five our ways on out of here in three, two, one, bazinga. Let's go. Why is, why is I bazinga? I have no idea. It just came out. It was genuine, so we'll go with it. Thank you. Hope to see you for Kilometers for Katie tomorrow, team. Take care. Bye.